Welcome back to a new video. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe so that we can reach 10,000 subscribers as soon as we can. Today we're going to be going over the hardest SAT algebra questions that you're going to see in the entirety of the new digital SAT. We're going to be going over and breaking down each of these questions to make sure to stick until the end to see that last question. It's most likely going to be the hardest one. So first, here we need to solve an inequality. This is relatively simple for being one of the hardest questions on our SAT. Let's do it as fast as we can. So first thing that I see here is we need to subtract this x from each side. So that way we have 6x plus 1 because we can only combine like terms. 7x minus x is 6x. So we have 6x plus 1 is less than 9. Now I need to subtract this 1 over. 9 minus 1 is 8. So now we have uh, our inequality looking like this. We need to now isolate our x. We need to, so we divide both sides by 6. x is less than 8 over 6. We can simplify that by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2. So x is less than 4 over 3. And the answer choice that matches that is answer choice B. Make sure to pay attention to that inequality sign. Very important. Moving to our next question here. Two lines are graphed in the coordinate plane have the equations 2x plus 5y equals 20 and y equals kx minus 3. For what, for what value of k will the two lines be perpendicular? So we need to understand with two linear equations being perpendicular, the relationship between their slopes is negative reciprocal. So our first step here is to find the slope of this line. It's in standard form. Let's go ahead and convert it to y equals mx plus b format or slope intercept form. To do that, we move over our 2x, so we subtract 2x from each side. Our equation now looks like 5y minus 2x plus 20. Now we can divide every term by 5 to isolate that y. So y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 4. So our slope here is negative 2 fifths x. We don't need to worry about our y-intercept whatsoever. We just need to take the negative reciprocal of negative 2 fifths. So a negative reciprocal is going to be positive because a negative times a negative is always a positive. And the reciprocal of two-fifths is five-halves. So our slope of our perpendicular line is going to be five-halves. So k is equal to five-halves. Answer choice C is the correct answer. Moving on to question number three here, we have a systems of equations. And we're trying to find the solution and then add our solution coordinates together to find our answer. Given that this first equation is in standard form, and then our second equation, it's super easy to isolate the a. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be using substitution to isolate the a in the second equation so we, we can substitute it into this first equation right here. So move, isolating our a, we just add 1.4 to each side on that bottom equation, and I'm going to distribute that negative 6. So now we have neg a equals negative 6b plus 0 0.6 plus 1.4. We can combine like terms really quickly here. 0 0.6 plus 1.4 is 2. So a equals minus 6b plus 2. Let's substitute that into our first equation. So now we have 0 0.7. And instead of having our a, we substitute in this whole expression. Negative 6b plus 2. And then we have minus 0 0.8b equals negative 0 0.1. Before I can write that, let's just distribute out our 0 0.7. 0 0.7 times negative 6 is 4 is negative 4.2 b plus 1.4 minus 0 0.8 b. Negative 4.2 b minus 0 0.8 b that is negative 5 b. So now we have negative 5 b plus 1.4 equals negative 0. 1. To isolate our b, we subtract both sides by 1.4, So and the negative 0 0.1 minus 1.4 is negative 1.5. So now we have negative 5b equals negative 1.5, and now we can divide both sides by negative 5. So we can isolate our b here, and then negative 1.5 divided by 5 is 0 0.3, positive 0 0.3. So we know that our b value is equal to 0 0.3. Now we can substitute this 0 0.3 into this equation over here to solve for our a value. 
0 0.3 times negative 6 is negative 1.8. Negative 1.8 plus 2 is positive 0 0.2. So A equals 0 0.2. The sum of 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 is positive 0 0.5. Answer choice D is the correct answer. Moving on to question number 4 here. An airplane begins its descent to land from a height of 35,000 feet above sea level. The airplane's height changes about negative 4,000 feet every free Minutes, round to the nearest minute, and approximately how many minutes will the plane land? Assume the airport runway is at sea level. So we know that our starting amount, or our y-intercept, is going to be 35,000. And we're going to be subtracting a certain amount per minute in order to find the exact decline. So this would be our slope. Negative 4,000 over 3, and a slope so obviously next to that x and this needs to equal our, va our y variable or the height when the plane lands and if the airport runway is at sea level that height is going to be zero so now we have this full equation and we just need to solve for x so first step is to just get the x by itself we minus 35,000 both sides so now we have minus 35,000 equals negative 4,000 over 3x and then whenever the coefficient to our slope is variable and we and whenever the coefficient to our slope is a fraction and we need to get rid of it we can just multiply it by the reciprocal so we're going to multiply each side by negative 3 over 4,000 this will completely isolate our x and then find our correct answer let's put into our calculators negative 35,000 times negative 3 over 4,000 when doing that calculation, we find that x is equal to 26.25. We need to round to the nearest minute. Our nearest minute here is 26. So 26 is our correct answer. Moving on to question number 5 here. Let's read it out. Prachi needs between 240 and 260 total feet of fence panels. The home improvement store has 24 short or 6 foot fence panels and 28 long or 8 foot fence panels in stock. Which of the following combinations of fence panels can she buy? So, let's just use some common sense here to eliminate some answer choices. If there's over 24 short or over 28 long fence panels in our answer, we know that it is not possible to buy that amount. So answer choice A and B pass this restriction. However, answer choice C says 27 short fence panels. There are only 24 short ones. So we can eliminate answer choice C. And we can also eliminate answer choice D because 30 is greater than 24. We did, this store does not have 30 short fence panels in stock. Now that we've eliminated it down to A and B, we know there needs to be 240, between 240 and 260 total feet of fence panels. We know our short fence panels are six foot and our long fence panels are eight foot. So we can multiply six times six and 26 by eight and then add that together, see if it is within our range of 240 and 260 total feet. If it is, then it's correct. So 6 times 6 is 36, 26 times 8, we can just write that off to the side, 26 times 8, 6 times 8 is 48, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 4 is 208, so now we have 36 and 208, we add those two values together, and if it is within our range, then it is correct. So 8 plus 6 is 14, 0 plus 3 plus 1 is 4, and then 2 carries down and 244 is indeed between 240 and 260 total feet so answer choice a is correct moving on to question number six here we have an equation and we need to figure out how long it will take priya to reach her destination if she's traveling by train to her job the equation gives a distance from her destination x after t hours so when Priya reaches her destination, the distance from her destination is of course going to be equal to zero. So we're going to set our x to zero and solve for t. First step here, distribute. 78 times 7.7. .7. 78 times 7.7. .7. 78 times 7.7 .7 is 606. So zero equals 600.6, my bad. Minus 78t. Now we would subtract 600.6 from each side, negative 
equals negative 78t. And last but not least, we can divide both sides by negative 78. So 600.6 divided by 78 is 7.7. .7. Negative divided by negative is, of course, positive. So t equals 7.7. .7. So it takes her 7.7 .7 hours for her to reach her destination. Question number seven here, we are given two inequalities, and we're trying to find what graph matches equations. So first step here, just get them both into y equals mx plus b format. To get our bottom equation into y equals mx plus b format, we need to isolate the y. So how we can do that, we can add y to each side, subtract x to each side. So now we have y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 3. First step with our first equation is to just minus 3x from each side. We have negative 4y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 2. And now to isolate our y, we need to divide both sides by negative 4. Whenever we multiply or divide by negative, our inequality sign switches. So now we have y is less than or equal to 3 fourths x minus one half. We're going to see which graph matches our lines. All of our lines in these questions are graphed the same. We just need to determine the shading. So with our bottom line going up, or our first equation, we're going to be shading below. So answer choice A, it shades above this line. So answer choice A is incorrect. And choice B also shades above this line, which represents that equation right there. Also incorrect. Answer choice C and D both shade below this first line, so they are in right now. So let's take a look at our second equation. Our top line sloping down needs to be shading above. Answer choice C does not shade above that line, but answer choice D does. So answer choice D is cor correct, that above line sloping downwards shades up. This downwards line sloping upwards shades below, of course, according to our inequality signs. Moving to question number eight, Sarah has low-fat milk, which contains 3.25% butterfat by volume. One type of low-fat milk, which contains 1% butterfat by volume. Which of the following systems could be used to determine the amount of whole milk, W, in ounces, and the amount of low-fat milk, L, in ounces, that Sarah should mix to obtain 32 ounces of a low-fat milk 2% butterfat by volume. First step here is to set up our inequalities in a way that makes sense. Of course, right off the bat, we can see that if L plus W is going to be equal to such a low amount, L and W, the variables, would have to be extremely low themselves, which just wouldn't make sense if we had to multiply them by something and it would reach 32. So we can instantly eliminate both B and A, as they would put L, W at such low amounts. With answer choice C, we have 0.01 L plus 0.03. Even if L and W were greater than 1, of course they are if they total to 32, well, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.0325 is 0 0.0425, which is greater than 0 0.02. That also eliminates C from contention, leaving D to be the only answer choice that actually makes sense. This is extremely important to understand because L and W represents the amount of ounces. And of course, we're going to total to 32 ounces in total, which makes sense for our bottom equation. Then our top equation, 1% into a decimal, 0.01, 3.25% as a decimal, 0.0325. Of course, that matches. And to find 32 ounces, of 2% butterfat, we need to multiply 32 times 0 0.02. That's where we obtain our 0 0.64. So answer choice D is correct here. Moving to question number nine. In this equation, F is a constant. For what value of F does the equation have no solutions? Of course, we know that no solutions is when the coefficients to our variables is the same, but our constants are unequal, meaning that the equation has no solution, which makes it correct course we see on our right side 2 at 2 is going to be the coefficient to our x so on our left side 2 has to be the coefficient to our x in order to cancel out those variables so b is the only correct answer moving to question number 10 here our last one erica has 30 dollars saved and receives an allowance of 10 dollars each week her older brother paulo has 20 dollars saved and receives an allowance of 15 dollars each week 
If Erica and Paolo save all their allowance money, which of the following of equations give the number of weeks it will take for the siblings to have the same amount of money? The basic gist here, we need to set up an equation, have Erica's linear equation on the left side, have Paolo's linear equation on the right side, and then see which of our answer choices matches our setup. So here, it's very important to determine which numbers are y-intercept or initial one-time amounts, and which values are going to be reoccurring or our slope values. With Erica's equation, we can see $10 each week is going to be repeating. So 10 is our slope, 10 is with that x, plus 30 because we had $30 saved at the start. That's how y-intercept. So that's what our left side looks like. Then Paulo had $20 saved at the very start, initial amount, and then receives an allowance of $15 per week, or 15x. It's just as simple as this. The only answer choice that matches our equation is answer choice A. So answer choice A is correct. And that was our final question, going over the hardest SAT algebra questions. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would definitely come back to this one because it is kind of a summation of all the hardest questions that we'll be going through on the SAT. Continue preparing, and I'll see you guys in another video. Goodbye.